All right. So that should make much. Tape, so that should make a much comments. better video than last time. We did such a good job last time. I mean, we, we changed camera angles and everything. All right. It's six thirty, so I guess we'll call the meeting to order. Um, we'll do the pledge first, and then get to roll call. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. For the roll call, uh, John Dubianski had emailed me this morning and said he's got to work, so he will not be in. Ben had said he was coming. That's Saturday. <laughs> and there he is. So... I don't know if we have to do this officially or not. Those are the only two people we're missing, that and Steve, which is going to get to us in a second. Uh, Troy Hopkins. Thank you. Anybody here from her? I have not. Nope. We'll mark her down as unexcused. She might come back in. She, I think she just pulled up. Well, there we go. That's what, we, that's what happens when we get the meeting going 30 seconds early. I apologize. We're 30 seconds late. <laughs> You took my seat, Mr. Ben. <laughs> no, I'm good. We'll just pull this one. It's okay. no problem. Sorry. That's the one that sometimes, yeah. I, I can move over there. No worries. I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> no worries. No, you're good. Okay. Please. All right. It's all right. All right. We have a review <coughs> of outstanding minutes. I have not received any minutes. Has anybody else received minutes? No. That's what John Dubianski circulated the minutes of the last meeting. And unfortunately, it's a good thing he took those minutes because that's all we have. We'll leave that outstanding for the time being. And Did everybody get to read those on on the email? Do we want to vote on those? What's the I'll move them as they were written. Second. Uh, all right. Further comment? I just note that he seemed to have any action that was taken recorded. It's a good thing for that, too. Oops. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstention? Abstain. Sorry, I'm going to try to write minutes. That's what I was just going to ask, Mr. Chair. If you were also doing... I was going to try. I've been in that position. <laughs> I understand what it's like. You always sound better when you take your own minutes. <laughs> There's less spelling errors. Um, so there we go, and that was the only set of minutes. And again, I apologize that we didn't get the video running correctly for the last meeting, so we don't have uh, the video to, to go back to. But now we're good. <coughs> We've been trained. And there's a crib sheet, which is even better. To citizens' comments for the next bit, do we have any comments? I like this. We're moving right along. Old business. We discussed at length uh, Steve Gemelli at the last uh, Giovanni. Yeah. Giovanni. 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 I'm reading it upside down. Third, third tries the charm. <laughs> um, <coughs> this is the fourth meeting, regardless of which way we, we at, at minimum, this is the fourth meeting. So I think we can safely say that we now have a vacancy on the board. All those in agreement on that. We had some issues at the last meeting of just because it wasn't on video, we had some issues with outstanding minutes and if we were actually up to four, but this has hit us at a minimum of four. So we've, we've moved beyond that. So I would say that we have a vacancy to fill. We have two people speak last time, um, Andrea Hoteling and um, Leela Thompson and with their interest in filling. Do we have... I was going to make a nomination if you wanted to. Well, I was going to wait and see if maybe that was why Jack came down, too. <laughs> 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 he nominated me. Like. And I have, I, I received no further um, applications for candidates. Okay. So, Ms. Hodling, you're still interested in? Yep. So I will nominate Andrea Hodling. I'll second that. The position. And I had, I had told Ms. Thompson that at the last meeting we would extend it as well because she was here. So um, I'll nominate Ms. Thompson as well. So I will do a propensity of votes, and 
again, we're voting for one member, so please only vote once and keep this somewhat easy. Um, all those in favor of Ms. Hodling, signify by raising your hand. We have... Looks unanimous. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. I, while I'm counting here, we'll do the same thing we did last time. Come on down, we'll get you right to work. <laughs> However, she's got to be sworn in before she can... She oh. can't vote, but we can we can have her. She can have a copy of the budget and <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Kevin. So just to, to advise you, our next meeting is a week from today. So the sooner you can get into the town clerk's office, the, the better. I was gonna say no problem, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I realize that. it's 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 a quick yeah. holiday. Uh, open late Monday. There's a draft copy of the budget and also a copy of the police chief. I assume the town clerk's open tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome. There we go. We are moving right Careful along. What I wish for. <laughs> Did you get one of these? <laughs> Thank you, too, for expressing interest. Sometimes it's much harder to find somebody to fill it. I'm not used to seeing purple. Excuse me? We are now at. Purple. Oh. Received town <laughs> budget. Yeah, and it. If I can, I'm just going to hand this out without much fanfare or comment. This is a draft budget. Uh, the Board of Selectmen has not finalized our budget at this point. Um, I, most of it is <coughs> intact. Um, I believe the, the primary area that's going to be confusing to folks are fire and rescue. And the Board of Selectmen is working on budget preparation. We're in the process of combining the departments and haven't decided exactly how we're going to present that budget, uh, you know, whether it's going to be two separate budgets, a combined budget. And um, we're also talking about uh, two additional personnel, uh, as I mentioned at the last meeting. Uh, but I think this will give you a, a good chance to look at everything else, uh, the big budgets, the police, the highways, certainly uh, transfer station. There's background information, uh, a couple of pages into the budgets. I'll be providing more background information, and we can also, uh, you know, taking a look at this, the committee can decide who they definitely want to see as department heads um, before the committee. I'm assuming the usual suspects, and if you've uh, got anything else, Beyond that, we can certainly invite everybody. It, it appears that the fire department starts on page 32, if anybody wants to mark. Kim? So in the, in the past, we've um, pre-published uh, an operating order and asked that all the chairs be, be present. Uh, the other thing we've done is we've tried to group um, items that you know, the, the town clerk oversees several budgets, so we try to group those so you can just come in and <coughs> get them all done. And I, I think that precedent has served us well. Um, it certainly is worth noting that in the past we have had some for um, whatever reason, you know, unable to attend or, or chose not to attend. Uh, and that is, that's hung up discussion on some, some budgets. So uh, if we could put a schedule that way, uh, committee members know um, which order to take the budgets in preliminarily. Are we shooting to have this finalized? How soon? Um, I'm guessing not by Monday. Probably not by Monday. I would assume, you know, a week or so after that, mm -hmm. um, maybe two weeks. So we can probably work on a schedule, schedule in our next I meeting. think you could certainly work on a schedule uh, at any point. I, obviously, you've got the big budgets, the police chief, the transfer station, the highway agent that uh, you know, make up the bulk of that number you're going to want to see. Yep. Uh, uh, in the past, we've also had, when we've, we've had some areas of the budget that are sticky, um, such as the fire and rescue seems to be now, we've had other budgets that you've been willing to say are final so that we can get rid of low-hanging fruit, things like uh, our... Yep. our uh, Tax and ZBA and, and all, all that kind of stuff. Is that something we can possibly do so that maybe some of the mm. low-hanging fruit can be taken care of early? You could certainly do that early, although I will say that the Board of Selectmen has not voted uh, to, to recommend the budget at this point just because we've got... So those smaller budgets still are... You, you wouldn't be taking a separate vote with the, the selectmen to just say, let's go ahead and approve those ones so that they can deal with those. Yeah, I don't see those changing at all. Um, However, you haven't voted. Have a, we so haven't we'll voted to finalize it. Um, <coughs> if I came and spoke to Mr. Harrington this, 
this afternoon about the changes in the fire department lines and how it was set up this year. Do you want to speak to that real quick or should we let, since we have the town administrator here, speak to just how it's set up because it's set up a little differently than usual? Yeah, I would be happy to defer to the town administrator to speak to that. What you're going to see in the budget this year is I have left the single independent fire department and the single independent rescue department budgets in there with a dollar on each line so that you're able to see what the 2017 budgets are currently. You'll also see a 2018 proposed fire rescue budget with the two departments combined. This way you can compare and contrast. If I had left the budgets out or not put a dollar in, uh, there would be no reversing this if we wanted to change course mid-year. So I'm leaving those budgets in there with a dollar to leave the lines open for obviously changes that may occur throughout the year. And that was the only major format change? Correct. Everything else is as you have seen it in the past. And the Board of Selectmen has pretty much given tacit approval to the numbers in the budget. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Okay. So the, the only concern that I have is that, um, you know, it's, it's already a fairly compressed cycle that we, we work under. And our work session for the town budgets is a week from Saturday. So we've got a meeting next Tuesday scheduled and then a work session the following Saturday. And it's, it, generally we do the low-hanging fruit uh, tonight and next Tuesday uh, while bringing anticipated questions forward to the town administrator and the select board and the department heads so the that they can, come, they can come prepared to the work session. Um, that, that being said, I, I would suggest a prudent course of action would be to um, follow fairly closely uh, the order that we've taken the budgets in the past because that, that order ser has served us pretty well. Uh, it puts less... Um, Do you have a recommendation on the order? Yeah, it's published in last year's meeting schedules. Okay. It's, that's, Still they, that's, yeah, we yeah it goes online for, for years past. So it's, And the other thing is um, when the agenda is, is put together and published, um, it certainly helps if the page number can be annotated mm -hmm. on the agenda. Uh, it makes flipping through the book uh, a, lot, a lot faster. Um, search and rescue, so to speak, uh, goes quicker because... Um, you know, we're supposed to get the school budget on December 5th. I don't think you're going to see the, the well, we can get it a link to the school side. We're not to you yet. Okay. Okay. But we're probably not going to. Is uh, no, we're still working on it. There's still quite a bit to do, so, so. it'll be after that. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would not be adverse to taking votes on some of the low-hanging fruit, even though the budget has not been approved by the selectmen, uh, to get away get rid of all the low-hanging fruit uh, such as our own budget that we know we're not yeah. going to change a number on um, but um, that would be at the discretion of the chair how to I move forward with this stuff I would be fine with doing that on Tuesday um, knowing that as long as we know that the budget is not finalized but if I don't see them changing some of the numbers as well and it would be nice to cross some cr check some boxes off early in the game get rid of those small ones yep so I will work on that um, <clears throat> take a look at that and try to get a list together that we can um, take care of on, on Tuesday. I know with the suddenly it's Thanksgiving weekend and everybody's I know I'm thinking elsewhere other than budget but we'll uh, we'll get some of that done. Anything else on the town budget while we got everybody here? Yeah Mr. Chairman there's no there's no backup info with what we've got from the town so it, that lead, that's probably going to leave a lot of questions open because we're not going to have much time to review that. Will we have the, the backup for next Tuesday, or could we get that? I well, we can't get it earlier. Well, um, what, what I can try to do, I got these together tonight so you'd have them. Uh, what I can try to do is scan a full set of all the backup, send it to Alden, and if he can distribute it, at least you'd have electronic copies of the backup. That would be fantastic. Sure. Thank you. That way you'd have it for the long weekend and be prepared. Just, just send it to everybody. I don't think I'll be near a... Uh, well, I don't, I, I'll get the group email. I don't have it currently, okay. but I'll make sure everybody gets a copy. It's same way that we're doing the accounts receivable. I, I don't see a point to sending it to me first and then sending it out. Just If we okay. can just send it out to everybody, it skips one layer. That would have saved me a lot of work. <laughs> you didn't think of it, huh? 
<laughs> I was told I couldn't, that I had to do it first. <clears throat> All right, anything else on the town budget while we're here? Mr. Chairman? Um, I'm just interested in knowing what the final disposition of the FICA problem from last year was. Um, did that get resolved, and is the IRS happy with us? Uh, it did get resolved. In fact, it got, uh, it got resolved rather recently. Um, it got resolved at last night's selectmen's meeting. Um, we signed all the, all the amended W-2s, uh, taking care of the rest of the paperwork, and I believe the, the final cost for the entire process was around 20 4000 right around $24,000. Uh, that included uh, making up for the, the underestimated um, FICA and FICA and Medi. And Were there the penalties? IRS has signed off and they're happy with just the, you know, there was something about only going back to three years, even though there was five years of If problems. I could defer to the town administrator, he can give us. The, the board just uh, signed all of the documentation last night. The IRS has not gotten the documentation yet. It needs to wait for a check to be cut next week. Those will go to the Treasury Department. The Social Security Administration will get the corrected W-2s. Uh, we've been working right with our Treasurer. She has done all of the homework. We only have to go back three years. So it'll be 14, 15, and 16 for those employees that were affected, that were part of the retirement system. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I recognize that we had overhead costs for accounting and all of that that was uh, part of this whole issue. Did we also end up incurring any penalties with the IRS that we had to pay out? And can we get an accounting of what the whole debacle ended up costing the town in, in not the money that we ended up giving to the employees that they deserved into their funds, but the costs that it incurred to us in, in fixing the problem? There was only one cost for the treasurer. She offered her services. Uh, it, it was fourteen hundred and forty-five dollars, I believe. Something that was included. I don't in have the actual numbers figures. in front of me, but I can have them for next week. So we didn't end up having to pay any penalties to the IRS for that. Oh, great, Not thanks. As of yet. <laughs> we satisfied on that topic. Before we move on, um, if you. Want to speak to this real quick? I, I don't have much to say about it. There was a request for the uh, wage survey that the police chief had done. Um, I, the one comment I will make, uh, he used some towns that are very similar in size to Deerfield in that wage survey. He also used some towns that are in a different geographic location and maybe a little bigger than us. And the point of that was not necessarily to say that Deerfield uh, you know, is a, and I forget the towns that are in there exactly, a Dover or Durham or, or what have you, but just to show uh, the people that we're losing tend to go uh, towards the seacoast. Um, occasionally we lose folks to Manchester, but for the most part, uh, we've been losing people to towns a little bit bigger than us, a little bit southeast of us. So some of those towns were included in there just to, to I think, give an idea more of the competition that he's up against as opposed to what Deerfield's wage scale might need to be okay any questions on the wage study and he'd be happy to address that too when he appears Meet before the committee I know I just when we hand stuff out I just want to make sure nobody has any questions while we get you guys to answer them. any further questions comments concerns for the town all right moving on then Open. yep <coughs> mr. chair I recently had an interaction with um, one of our new hires. He had just finished the academy and uh, was so excited to be involved here, was so excited to be in this town, and it was just really nice to see. We've had multiple ones. This is not the only person I've seen do that, but it was, it was very nice to know that he was just all Jimmy Jacked <laughs> and ready to be here, and that was a great feeling. So I'd like to keep that type of enthusiasm and interest in our budget and in our minds with um, quality officers. Okay. Thank you very much. Anything else for the town? I guess we're looking at you, Zach. Uh, school budget. We have been working on it over the last couple of meetings. Was this from you? Yes, that okay. was from me. That was a question that popped up at the last NBC meeting was how many students uh, were historically uh, the high school tuition line made up. And so that information is contained in that chart. Uh, you can see it's fluctuated up and down a little bit over the years. Um, it also includes our 
um, student body at DCS as well. So it was all happened to be together on one page, so handy to have. Uh, we still have some work left to do to the budget. We have can, not. Can, can we go into this just a little bit? Sure. So the, the question really um, wasn't so much the exact numbers, but it, it went to how the, how the surplus for the tuition is relatively large compared to the overall budget, right? So uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me um, right now, but I want to say that the tuition surplus counted for roughly a third of the About surplus. About $200,000. I can find it. I have it. It was about two hundred grand. So 30, 40 percent, right? Yep. So, so the, question, the question is, what, what generated that, that large of surplus? <coughs> And, and it kind of goes to another another point, um, and we can take it up under under new biz, or we can take it up now. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm just a little curious because our our high school surplus is large. There's been recent issues in Pembroke where their high school was a negative surplus, and so I'm curious what controls we have going on through the year that might allow us to better manage those line items. Well, I was hoping we were just gonna get an update and then we could get into it. Yeah, um, and that wasn't the question you asked at the last meeting, but we can draw well, it. It is, I wanted to know what the you what asked. The you asked how many students made up the tuition, historically, which is the data you've been provided. Okay, so there's no recording there's of that. other questions, bring them forward when we move the, into new business. The, 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 question, the question was, and there's no recording of the meeting, so we don't have much to go back on. But the question was, what generates the large surplus? Were we overestimating the number of students going that, that didn't go there, or were we over budgeting the per student tuition? Last year, the tuition figures provided by Concord were not provided uh, at, the t at the time that we were drafting the budget. So we used a estimate with a uh, pad built into the estimate based upon what, we, what the business administrator thought that amount was going to be, and that did create us cause for us to budget for a slightly larger amount. This year, we have already received our numbers from Concord, so we have our tuition figures for next year. I think just for the matters of clarity, if you could just bring those numbers that you guys used last year yep. to the next meeting, I think that would help. Because what, I, what I'd like to see is, is how much of that is from students we thought were going to go to Concord High that didn't, so it was money that wasn't spent, versus how much of that was because we over budgeted per student. <clears throat> okay. Yep. All right. So back to what we had started with. Okay. So where we were was uh, we are still working on the budget. There's still quite a bit of work left to do. Um, don't have an exact date as to when we'll be providing it to the budget committee. Uh, it will be sometime in December. Uh, when it is complete, we will be sending it over, and I'll give you guys updates as we progress from meeting to meeting here. Uh, our next meeting is in, uh, I believe, a week and a half. It'll be the first Wednesday in December. So that is when we meet again. Hopefully at that meeting we can either button it up or get close to buttoning it up and then we can prepare everything to bring over to the committee. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. So the, the only cautionary tale I've got to, I've got to sing for that is typically we, we get it um, the first week of December from the school. We have, we have two meetings in December and then um, one in January and then the work session. So there's, there's only um, four meetings, one work session, three meetings uh, after the fifth, uh, basically before we have to have our public hearing on the budget. So we, we have to get it done by January 6th. Um, it does not leave a lot of time um, to, to get through. No, it doesn't. That, that <coughs> <coughs> so you're hoping to have it, you said this, the first I'm week of we were able to button it up at the next meeting, but I'm not Which is when? Be the first Wednesday in December. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but it's the sixth. The sixth. Yeah. So that will be the next next meeting we have. Hopefully we can button it up, but it is not by any means guaranteed at that point that the board will be able to act on it fully. Uh, if we do button it up at that meeting, it'll be brought to the next budget committee meeting after that. Okay. Uh, if we do not have it buttoned up, we meet two weeks after that. So that'd be the twenty first. 
Um, we are hoping to budget it up prior to that, but we also uh, do not want to bring a budget to the committee that is not complete. And that we sure. I, I have to say to echo Kevin's concern, <laughs> I, I would be really concerned if we got it the 21st. I understand, and we are working to get it to prior to that, but we are not bringing a budget that isn't But the complete. 21st gives us one weekday meeting, one Saturday, to consider a $12 million budget. That... I don't, I don't understand why we're breaking with the precedent that we've had. I mean, I, I think Jim's probably, Jim or Andy is the longest serving member on this committee. And I don't think there's a precedent for that budget coming in as, as late as the week before Christmas. No. It was late last year. And, there have and, been the occasional odd year where it has been, but there's usually been some extenuating circumstances. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, it really puts us in a hard position to try to get yeah. a good chance to get through the numbers. Um, it almost makes me ask, isn't there a, some way that the school board themselves could decide that they're going to meet more frequently or sooner to try to finish their budget so that we could have it on time? On time. Well, I think <clears throat> I'll echo the concerns, so hopefully we'll see you guys. So, but the board is concerned about presenting a budget that they haven't had a chance to act on. So Understand. the board has decided to complete the budget prior to signing it to the budget committee. Okay. Well, we'll bring that up at the next meeting, and hopefully you guys get it done sooner rather than later. Anything else for the school? Uh, we'll go ahead, oh, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Um, I have to say, you know, because I've been interested in this, I watched the two school budget meetings where they did the budget stuff, the school board meetings, and um, I want to say I was very pleased that they looked at the salary line, and this year, I think for sure, um, the new hires will be in there. Uh, you know, the people are retiring, they'll have new hires as opposed to the full salary. And I also thought um, they had made some good progress making some pretty significant cuts from what was wanted by the administration. So, um, you know, I, I, I see that they've moved along quite a bit, so I'm hopeful that they would be able to finish we, we have been very cognizant of the original budget that was presented did include a uncomfortable increase and the uh, board did send it back to the administration to trim as much as possible. There are unfortunately some increases that we cannot avoid um, which uh, appear to be causing the budget to increase overall um, but we are looking at it very, very well, hard. I have Two questions along that line. One is um, one of the other big items that is often over budgeted is the special ed budget and I think it's because people are very conservative to make sure that we cover those mandated things and my question would be you know next year they're talking about a two hundred thousand dollar increase in that line which is already a very high line mm -hmm. um, and my question would be is this about known students that have known needs or is this you know we might need it because somebody might move in the district you know how how certain are they that they really need that 200,000 it's it's formulated based off of the IEPs for the individual students I will say that the safest answer for me to defer to on anything involving the special ed budgets will be to defer them to the special ed director when she's here to meet with us because right. there is a lot of um, I don't want to say nuance, but there's a lot of things that are involved in the special ed budgets that are very specific, and there's a lot of laws regarding the special ed budgets. Um, but we we have looked at them, um, and I will defer those questions. That is where the bulk of the increase we have seen this year is is in special education costs and some transportation costs tied to that. And unfortunately, questions beyond that, I will defer okay. to Deb Trotter. Yeah, I just year. wanted to make sure that we aren't like building a fudge factor in there that then comes back, you know, two years later, we over budgeted by 200,000. It is all based upon individual needs. And then the second one is regarding the high school tuition, um, which was my other thing last year. Um, we now have a contract that we have to guarantee a number of students to Concord in February, February 15th. Mm -hmm. And last year in the budget, we were projecting 171 students mm -hmm. and I wonder did we guarantee that amount I mean that's the number that was given at the deliberative session and I see we actually are running at 167 which means maybe there's four students 
that we're running below budget. And according to the contract, if we're below budget in the current year, then um, any amount that we're below, we don't get back this year, but they credit it as a deduction against next against year's the tuition. Following year's bill. And so I'm wondering if they've taken into account, you know, maybe there's 45 or 50,000 there, um, you know, based on whatever That's our cost next, or this year's tuition is. Because I'm in a private school. Um, oh, and then I do have one other. <laughs> okay. Um, and that is, um, I listened to your discussion at the school board meeting and somebody on the board brought up the question of why do we pay Co Brown 16,000 and we pay, you know, uh, Concord 11? And I believe I heard the answer was that legal advised that we must pay whatever the tuition is. And, um, it was interesting because I looked at your website, the school board website, and on, I don't know, sometime four weeks ago or so, there was a policy out there from August 2014 where the school board actually voted that we will never pay more than Concord tuition to any other school. And then in November, no, then, two weeks later, I go to look for that same thing. I had printed off a copy, but it's no longer there. And what's there now is a superintendent statement saying, we will pay whatever the tuition is. You know, they, that, that wording changed. There was something adopted by the board in August 2014. In November, it was different. And I believe the answer was that legal says we have to. And I went back and read RSA 193.3 and 194. And 193.3 is the one that says if you contract with an out of district, you know, district for your student. And I believe it's because of manifest hardship. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's 193.3. Yep. Yep. Um, then it appears that perhaps because of the hardship, you're supposed to pay the full tuition. But I also can read that a parent could just apply to go to some other place and maybe they can get somebody to uh, accept them, like Co Brown. Mm -hmm. And I think Depending upon the reason why they're going there, I, I think if you're just a sibling of somebody, which we apparently let siblings go, um, maybe we don't have to pay the full tuition. So I, I'd like a legal clarification. I know, and again, I will most certainly discuss that with the superintendent. There is a couple of additional policies that I think get laced into that, and, and as I'm sure if you've been reading policies, a lot of times they reference and refer back to other ones. So the school reassignment policy, which was a very hot discussion prior to my joining the board, which would have been right around that August 2014 time frame. That school reassignment policy was uh, a discussion that, that really revolved around that conversation. Is a Co Brown student worth more than a Concord student, blah, 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 and how that all handled and worked out. And there were some changes prior to my joining the board um, as far as how that works, as well as um, some RSA changes. So how that worked to tweak policies, I have to verify, talk to the superintendent about. But there was most certainly a couple of things that tweaked. Um, as far as the manifest hardship, that ties into our uh, school reassignment policy. And so Deerfield's current high school of record is Concord High School. That is where our students go. That is our, for lack of a better term, that is our high school. Um, the only way to not have uh, Concord be your high school is to request that manifest hardship. And then that is where that tuition is, whatever the rate is, at the, is. at the sending school. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I guess you've been doing your homework. <laughs> <laughs> My husband says, are you crazy? <laughs> Jim? Yes. Uh, following on that same topic, I seem to remember the big firestorm over that whole thing as well. And if I'm not mistaken, which I might be, but wasn't part of the discussion that the decision was made we would not pay any other school more than what we pay Concord, but that the remainder must be picked up by the parents individually. And I think that's part of what caused the firestorm and the outrage and everything that came in as far as controversy on that, because parents said they weren't going to pay it, that, they, that in I, prior years other students had gone and the town had picked it up and why should it be put. There was a whole lot of. <clears throat> I remember the meeting, I was at the meeting in the audience. Uh, a better place to be for that particular meeting. Um, I would have to go back and check the disposition. It was 
a number of years ago. Um, I'd have to go back and check the disposition. I do remember there being a lot of discussion about that. Why is your student worth a different amount than my student, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> I don't directly recall how it was left by the board and what the result uh, or any action of that board was. Um, but it is something we can easily find out. I just have to have an opportunity to do some research. Anything else we want Zach to bring to the next meeting? Uh, well, it's not really, maybe not to bring to the next meeting, but I, I have to admit I've, I've gotten quite a few inquiries um, based on recent events in Pembroke. We're all members of SAU 53. Mm -hmm. We use the same um, accounting personnel. And there were obviously, um, to put it politely, accounting oversights in the Pembroke School District. Um, and so I, I just, I, I hope our board is being proactive with the SAU to make sure that proper controls are in place from top to bottom so that Deerfield would not find itself in a similar situation in the, in the future. Um, Mr. Chair, I've spoken with the business uh, finance uh, person. Business administrator. Administrator. Yeah. And um, it seems to be some of that is the way that it's reported as opposed to the way that it's actual being. So when the reporting comes and it demonstrates X amount is missing or X amount isn't there, it's actually in a reporting. It's not actually, it's not physically in the budget that way. But it's been reported as such and quite over-exaggerated. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I, my family lives in Pembroke. My well, family I, received increased tax bills. I think we're just going to stick with the, fall, the so original comment of we all hope that the school district is checking on it. Right. It is. And in the, in the, the, um, this committee needs to focus on Deerfield's budgetary items and not They're Pembroke's. having a meeting tonight. It's our SAU. Okay. Anything else? For the school. Mr. Chairman. Yep. One last thing, just a, a date kind of thing. Um, there's a deadline to request uh, a, a different placement for high school that the superintendent has put of December 15th, I believe, and notification to the students in that policy statement is February 28th. And I just wonder if that shouldn't be tightened up given two things. One is we have to budget prior to that. I mean, you know, that December 15th, the budget should already be wrapped up before that. And secondly, we have to guarantee to Concord by February 15th how many students are going to be attending there. And we're going to pay based on that number. So why would we say that we can make a decision by February 28th? Just it's an excellent question. Okay. So if you can get some clarification on the high school choice, which has only been going on as an issue here for, what, 120 years? Maybe a little more. <laughs> okay. Anything else for the school? Uh, we're going to go to new business, though. That was next on the agenda. Thank you. Once, twice, sold. Okay, new business. What do you got, Kevin? So I got, I've got a question for both the uh, town and school side. So um, given the snowstorm during the second session last year and given um, what's been a, a chronic um, notation of having to prepare budgets very, very early from the school district and obviously having um, increased trouble meeting those deadlines. I'm wondering if the school district, the school board and or the select board are going to put a warrant article um, on the warrant to move our voting day, move everything uh, to the May to the month of May. So you, under SB2, you have three options. You have an April, I'm sorry, a March, an April, or a May. And it would, we, it's my opinion, we'd want to keep the town and the school lockstep because that way it's one election day and it's just cheaper and cleaner that way. Um, and I would think that the, the May date would be the preferable as that would provide a, an extra two months to the, to the school board uh, sixth of a year to get their their budgets closer uh, to their actual closeout date, which has been a, a perennial complaint of the of the school board. So I was just wondering if either one of those bodies was planning on on doing that. Yeah, uh, we've had no discussion of doing that. Um, I don't believe it's even been a a blip on the radar on the town side of things. Okay, and the school is in the same position. Okay, so and Mr. Chairman, 
might I recommend to both the select board and the school board um, to consider that topic at their next meeting. It would certainly um, bring desired relief on the school side. I, I don't know if there's any advantage um, on the town side, but it would certainly bring desired relief. Uh, it's not a low bar. It takes a, it takes a 60 percent majority uh, to, to move when we, when we do that, uh, but it's, it's certainly doable. It would uh, bring budgetary relief, I think, to the school side, and I would, I would advise both both bodies to consider it. So noted. Any other new business? Um, the, the, only, the only other thing I had for a new biz was just because um, the agenda didn't say we were receiving the budget or anything tonight or the vacancy. So if we could just get um, some more details when the agenda is, is posted. Filling of vacancy. That's not on the budget. Oh, no, that was, uh, yeah. There's two different. That was um, John bailing me out on notice. So there were two different agendas. The second one has the filling of vacancy listed. I guess this one that was here. And I got this. I get this last night off the web page. But if we could um, get the agendas so that interested parties of the public. I know people are very interested in VZ and, and other departments, and it allows them to uh, mm -hmm. know and to participate if that's on their on their radar. Either of you, wonderful citizens, want to comment? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Jack, does he follow you everywhere? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. That's Jack and, and Dan, if anybody on TV is wondering, because we didn't change it over. Um, I'm sorry, this is digressing, but I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Hutchinson for the work that he's done at Hartford Brook. It looks amazing, and it took a long time to get there. It's noticed, and it's appreciated. Thank you. I have no ability to for positive to new business, we can always go back to. So. Thank you. Ben? Um, I'll just throw this out here. I, when I was on the DCC, I had to bring this, so um, when we I was sworn you. in, I was given this documentation. I don't know if the... Um, if anyone needs to make note of that, but they wanted to see it at the DCC, so. <laughs> We're not that complicated here. We <laughs> figure if you didn't get sworn at by the town clerk, then he'll tell us later. <laughs> and, right, yeah, if you, you can go visit him in the next couple, that'd be awesome. And can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. So <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. The next meeting is the 28th, which is next Tuesday at 6.30 here. <clears throat> and we'll see you guys then.